Rusty, thanks for being on today. It's great to see you're you. You're welcome. You're here to talk about a guitar you have. It's a PRS 408. Is that correct? That's right. Uh, Paul Reed Smith. And looks something like this. It's blue. It's got these little tiger stripes on it, you see. And um, <laughs> so it's a PRS. What year is it roughly, do you think it was built? Is it a, a newer guitar? Or? I bought it, I think, about six years ago, maybe seven. I bought it on eBay. Uh, I'm one of those people when I buy a guitar, I rarely buy a brand new guitar at Guitar Center okay. uh, because it's like buying a, you know, anything else is going to depreciate pretty quickly. Uh, I did some research on it and uh, I knew what I wanted to buy. And Paul Reed Smith, uh, he, he, he has different gradients of guitars that he makes. This one is a US made guitar. So his top of the line stuff is made in the United States. It has these inlays here of these braids uh, yeah. on the neck, um, which I don't know if you can see very well. You can see, absolutely. yeah, I, I don't call them birds. I call them braids. And uh, so anyway, the finish on the guitar, they, I forget what they call it. It was some sort of like premiere thing, whatever. It's a custom sort of thing that has uh, these stripes in it, which are in the wood. And I went for the, and also it has this trim here that's real pretty on the yeah. guitar, which I thought was awesome. So a 408, let me unplug it real quick here. I'm curious real quick, is that maple uh, body? Apparently it is a maple top. So yeah, um, that's what I'm, uh, I'm suspecting. Like yeah, that. they don't make these things anymore and you can't buy them. But anyway, um, the, the, uh, what the deal was, was they had, essentially there's four pickups in here and there's, um, I believe eight different combinations of pickup. Okay. Yeah. That, that are available to you. Um, and you can either have these two pickups in, uh, to where they're acting like one pickup. Okay, so it becomes like a humbucker, all right? Or you can have it as a single coil, only one of them is active, same thing here. So you individually, you can have, this is a humbucker, this is a single coil, this is a single coil, this is a humbucker, two humbuckers, two single coils. So, and that's done with this little switch right here. For each pickup, there's a switch in this direction, that's single coil, in that direction, it's a uh, dual coil, all right? Now, the only thing I don't think is great about the guitar is the fact that you only have one volume knob and one tone control, you know? Uh, I wish they had put two volume knobs and two co tone controls. That would have made it maybe a little more com complicated, but it also would have been a, a, um, a lot cooler, I think. But then it's got a, um, a very excellent um, tremolo in it that uh, Paul Reed Smith designed that is very, I mean, you can sit here and just go, and this thing will stay in tune. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's very cool. So it just stays in tune, right? So it's just, you know, he designed this, this whammy thing here where it is like indestructible, you know? Yeah. So, so this, uh, you might get a kick out of this. This is what I call fish slash deluxe tray. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, my friend Brian worked for, for Trey. Yes, correct. And, uh, and um, so, and I got to play on Trey's rig when I was in Vermont in Burlington. Okay. Yeah, I remember. And so I came up with a, uh, a, a, uh, pedal board setting on my helix and with my deluxe reverb uh to where so anyway a nice little clean nice and clean but then you know trey has his signature thing Nice clean sound. But then he gets into a thing where he gets kicks in some distortion. be more. 
more interesting. Come on. Sounds great. I feel like I'm at a fish show right now. And... You know, so that's like going through a Leslie, right? Anyway, so nice. Now, the one thing about this is Paul Reed Smith, he, the thing about single coil pickups, obviously they put out less amplitude than dual coil pickups. So he put in, in the circuitry, he put a thing where it compensates. So when you switch, you don't, the volume doesn't change. Right. Here's a dual coil, single coil. So it doesn't sound that much different. That's single. That's a little yeah. beefier. That's that's the dual coil, okay? Now, let's go to the bridge here. Here's a, a bridge single coil. That's single coil. Here's a, a dual coil. Fiddle, single coil. So there you go with a little, that's your single coil. Here's both of them in dual. It is a guitar that can drive a dirty amplifier similar to the way a Les Paul or an SG will, okay? Yeah. And yeah. in that regard. And as far as it sounding single coilish, it doesn't sound like a like a strat on any level. A strats one reason strats sound the way they sound is because of the, the way they're made, the body, etc. And the fact that the neck's bolted on the then the, the neck is not bolted onto this. It's kind of it's glued in. I heard that that uh, fretboard is Honduras. What was it? Honduras rosewood fretboard, which is the same wood that they use for marambas, the wooden xylophones, the marambas. Oh, really? It's the exact same wood. Wow, I did not know that. Well, see, you, you, I didn't know that. That was a big thing with uh, Paul Reed Smith was that he wanted to make sure that the all the wood he used was was helped the, the tone of the guitar a yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, so I did have an, a, a problem with uh, with the E string was impinging, and I couldn't get the the guitar set up to where it would it would not where it would just ring. Okay, and that and that happened after I'd owned it for about a year and a half, and so I you know I was like, well, shucks, I got to get another nut apparently, right? Yeah. And I you know contacted you know the the company, and they they were like, oh yeah, no problem, we'll send you two, you know. And they sent me two of them, and I don't, I don't even think they charged me. They were like, "Oh, we're, you know, awesome. you know, we got a, we got a whole bucket full of these things. You can just have them, you know." And so I, you know, I took it to my luthier, my guy that does work, and uh, and he put it, he put it on, and it, of course, it fixed it, and it, and, it, and it worked great. Who's your luthier? Who do you use? What's his a guy name? named Eric Chat? A guy named Eric Chaz. It's Eric's Guitar Shop. Uh, his motto is, "We're not happy until you're not happy." Uh, well, obviously, you don't take your guitar anywhere until you're going, I my guitar, what's wrong with it, right? So anyway, um, but he's been working on my guitars for 25 years, and awesome. he works on, uh, he he's in Van Nuys. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the, the recording studio, Sound City, you know, Foo Fighters, they yeah, did a, sure. uh, that's where Eric's shop is, is he's, wow. you know, and now that, that, it's not Sound City anymore, it's called Fairfax Recorders, but you know, you pull into, uh, you know, to get your guitar worked on. There's always, there's always musicians and coming and going out of Fairfax recorders. Unreal. And, uh, that's, you know, that's I, I, amazing. I mean, uh, you know, uh, the rumors was recorded there at that, in that building oh, in that yeah. studio. I mean, just, just tons Petty. of Tom Petty recorded a lot of albums. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wildflowers. He recorded yeah. wildflowers there. Yeah. So. Great. Well, cool, man. Thank you so much for showing us that guitar. It's really beautiful. It sounds amazing. It looks beautiful and it's, it's uh, just looks like a quality instrument. So, well, I'm i uh, uh, I'll play the tune I'm going to play is a, is a rush kind of tune. Yeah, and uh, you know this guitar can do anything, you know, but uh, it it's it really does. As a matter of fact, 
uh, Alex Lifeson, who is the guitar player on Rush, uh, you know, he played PRS guitars for, you know, on and off for years, you know, because okay. I mean, he, of course, the guy has thousand guitars, sure. but he did, you know, he did, you know, occasionally, you know, you can, on YouTube, you look at some Rush stuff, uh, you know, maybe in 20, 2005 to 2010, he was playing a PRS quite often, you know, he, I think he was playing a J24. The song I'm going to play is a, is a, is a tribute to Rush when Neil Peart died. He's the drummer. Uh, he passed away two years ago, and uh, I was a huge fan of Rush. I mean, I I saw them live probably five times. Uh, they were incredibly. I mean, I saw them back when. I mean, Getty Lee and I are like a month apart in age. Okay, mm-hmm. and so you know when I was you know playing in a cheesy lounge band in Dallas, you know, trying to become a recording engineer and doing session work, you know, Rush was playing. You know, they come into town and they they do a show, and I'd go see them. We had uh, I was in a band that was a very lousy original band, and uh, um, at that point in time, and and we were hired to play the the after party, the you know the after show party, mm-hmm. and and I sat there and I got to and I got to meet Getty and talk to him, you know, and he I saw him play at at, at the Memorial Coliseum, and then he saw me play at this at this after party so cool. so but he, yeah the difference was about your skills was he impressed <laughs> hey, here's, here's here's what it was he's over there drinking a beer he's leaning up against the bar you know he's been on the road forever and he's just like you know staring off into space i'm 32 he's 32 and i and i and i walk up to him and, and i go uh hey i saw your show tonight it was awesome and he goes i saw your show tonight <laughs> That was the end of the conversation. Yeah, that was just cruel. <laughs> it was like, no, oh, I think I'll slink away now. <laughs>